Neil Brown just has that it factor, I believe. He's like, called into the program. Everybody in the Big 12 is going to know his name, and all the quarterbacks are going to feel his pain. That underdog so, mentality has always been big for West Virginia. Well, we're just heartbroken that we were not good at our jobs. He is the modern-day Don Nealon. Trust the climb. And now it's time for the Country Roads Webcast. What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Welcome into another edition of the Country Roads Webcast, the Long Island Preview Edition for the second game of the 2021 West Virginia football season. As always, I'm your host, Jordan Cruz, joined by my co-host, Stephen. What's up, everybody? And our other co-host, Bradley. How's it going, everybody? All right, boys. So a uh, little bit more cheery this week, as I think we should be. Uh, got an easy win coming up on the schedule. Going to get our first win of the season, you know, be moving to one and one I think we can safe, safely say that. But before we get into Long Island and do a preview, because, you know, let's be honest, there's not too much uh, to talk about as far as that goes. I figured we could open this up with kind of our final thoughts or anything we wanted to say about Maryland that, we you know, we didn't get to say in the reaction show or what have you that um, you've seen now, you know, with some days to uh, take that in and, you know, rewatch the game, maybe listen to press conferences, you know, whatever, whatever you did, how you dealt with it. Um, any final thoughts on, uh, on the Maryland game, Bradley? Uh, so I, I tried to like pull myself away from it a little bit. I think I was really upset after that game. I'm still a little, dis- very disappointed. I mean, without saying I'm still very disappointed by that game. But I'm trying to try to recoup myself, calm down a little bit, you know. Let's let's take a step back. And I'm after listening to the Neil Brown, Brown press conference. If you guys checked in on our live uh, instant reaction on Sunday, I mean, I was pretty upset with Neil Brown saying, you know, it's t- kind of tough to trust the climb when a lot of the preseason stuff we were told just didn't come to fruition. And I think some of myself was throwing a lot of that. I expected to see it all come together in the first game of the season when we're playing a Maryland team, that's definitely a lot better than I expected. I mean, I knew they were going to be really good, but they played a damn good game. And uh, they, uh, Neil Brown said it really well when he said, you know, they didn't lose the game. We, we didn't win that game, but they definitely did not lose that game. That's what good programs do is they find a way to not lose games. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to trust Neil Brown. It's if if it's what I got to do, I'm going to trust the climb again. I still don't feel any different about this game coming up about making me feel any better going into the Virginia Tech game. But I'm going to trust Neil Brown and the fact of what he says is, you know, it was just, you know, miscommunication, really bad first game. That's not what the product that our team is. And it just happened to be the worst of all facets coming together in one horrendous game. So, No, I agree with you. I think that um, I haven't rewatched the full game like I really wanted to, but I have uh, watched, you know, West Virginia's offensive plays kind of compiled into a – uh, extended highlight video and the defensive plays compiled into extended highlight video, both like 20 minutes. And it, uh, you know, kind of puts some things into perspective. Some things maybe weren't as bad as I thought. Maybe I slightly overreacted, but still, you know, there were some things that definitely need work. And my thing still comes back to the offense. I've got to see improvement from this offense. You know, um, Neil Brown, I've seen a stat. Um, he has scored over 30 points five times in his 23 games here, one of those being against Eastern Kentucky. So really, if you want to say four out of 23, and then another stat that in the second half is really how we've struggled against power five programs on offense, averaging like 9.9 points per game in the second half of games and having 13 scoreless quarters, uh, be it the third quarter or the fourth quarter, I think six in one and seven in the other, can't remember which. So, you know, stats like that is concerning and especially – uh, when we saw the offense that we did, and I think that to me going forward, the main thing I'm concerned with is that I'm still trusting, you know, the program everywhere else. I think there was bright spots in a lot of places on defense, on special teams. And I think if the offense improves, maybe it's not as bleak as I previously thought following the Maryland game. Um, what about you, Stephen? Uh, I'm, kind of, I'm a little like you. I think that uh, – I think that I re- – overreacted a little bit like a lot of Mountaineer Nation did. Um, but for the most part, I think that I was right on right on with, with you know, mostly what I said in the Maryland Reaction Show. You know, I, I really wanted to see a lot more improvement out of Jared Deggie, um, you know, a lot more of what you you heard Neil Brown and, and his staff and, you know, the players on the defensive side of the ball speak of. 
you know, throughout the entire offseason and how this was, you know, the one of the top to bottom best receiving cores, not only in the Big 12 conference, that, but in the nation. I heard that a bunch from a lot of different people. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I did see a lot of bright spots that I, you know, when I go back and watch the game, you know, you, you get 217 yards out of Winston Wright and return return yards most in school history. So that is a positive. Um, y- your defense holds them. I think, I think the number was, we held them to th- uh, five different three and outs. And, you know, the, the amazing stat to me was West Virginia only went three and out one time in the entire football game. Uh, you know, I, I think in a lot of situations in a lot of football games, that's going to put you in position to win that football game. And, and, you know, as many negatives that I've seen out of West Virginia, on Saturday, I think that is a major positive for our defense. And I don't think we should harp it, you know, too much. I, I was a little um, too harsh on the defensive side of the ball. I will say that because the defense played really well up until, you know, about a little late in the third quarter. And that was only because I think they got worn down. They were on the field so much at that point. They just got worn down. And, and you know, you have to – your offense has to let your defense rest as, you know, vice versa. But, you know, I, I think from week one to week two, it's going to be a lot of improvement. I think there's a lot of positives to play in LIU and a team like LIU this weekend. It gives your team a chance to, you know, get in the right frame of mind heading into week three against Virginia Tech. So there's still time to to get the season back on track. I think, you know, it's not time to hit the panic button quite yet. There's a lot of Mountaineer Nation already calling for Neil Brown's head. And, and you know, that's not surprising to me at this point because we've seen that a lot in the past. But. I don't know. I'm, I'm still I'm still optimistic as as downtrodden as I was this weekend. Uh, I'm still optimistic about this season. Yeah, and I want to go in like on something that you had brought up during your reaction, talking about how Daggy is who he is, and like he's he's like a fifth year senior. I mean, like he's been there in a program for a long time. He's not going to do mm-hmm. that much improvement. And it's like Neil Brown coming through and talking about how like the things that Daggy needs to work on is just you know not making bad plays worse and like trying to eliminate those negative plays. And I feel like that's just like something we felt through day. You know, it hasn't necessarily been interceptions, but it's been not the best decision making all through last year. And it's like that's something that still worries me going forward. Is just like you know, the the guy's been there. If he was going to correct it, it probably would be corrected by now. Right. You know, and I'm I'm so worried that after this LIU game and going into Virginia Tech, if Daggy's not massively improved, I mean, because I'm sure he's going to show off and look like everything we wanted him to look like this weekend. Um, uh, just talking ahead a little bit, but I, if he doesn't come out and do that same thing against Virginia Tech, he's going to get booed, and that's not – I'm so worried that that might chase Neil Brown off because, like I said, I'm still super confident in that coach, but I think that the ugly side of WVU might rear its head then, and I'm I'm terrified of that. Yeah, and a lot of the things with Jared Deggie was his decision-making. That was my biggest gripe with him. I don't understand – you know how you roll out of the pocket and you got you're throwing in a double coverage and you don't even look at where you're throwing the football. Of course, you're going to throw an interception. You know you throw yeah, in a double coverage on the backside, a backside fade in the end zone. Of course, you're going to throw an interception in that situation. The defense is looking for it. I don't know. It's just you got to make smarter decisions, man. You got to make smarter decisions in those types of games, especially like. And that's something you expect to see in like an early time quarterback, not a man that's been there. Yeah. He's been in our program yeah. for, you know, two, three years now and somebody that should should know better. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Staring down receivers and stuff and you know, some of the mistakes he made are just things that can't happen. And I think um, you know, for West Virginia, I think Neil Brown put it um, you know, good. He said that, you know, they have minimal uh room for error hardly no room for error and that's because your offense isn't that great to begin with so for you to have a chance to score and stay in these games you can't turn the ball over and you got to be good at the fundamentals and I think that's what comes down to against Maryland overall is they beat us in you know turnovers and they tackled better than us and they blocked better than us you know no matter what you want to boil it down to analytics or whatever tackling and blocking and taking care of the football is probably the three most important aspects of the game and Maryland outplayed us in, in all three of those. They absolutely, yeah, they did. But the thing about it, you know, West Virginia, well, we turned the ball over four times last year. We're throwing it. What was it? Four inter? Might have been. Four, four, four interceptions. Day, day through four, yeah, interceptions four interceptions only. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we, we lost two, two Saturday. 
Like yeah. what? Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's just I don't know. And Neil Hard Brown still swallow. up and down on that last interception, just being an absolute fluke. And sure, whatever it is, blown play. It's an interception. It cost. Well, it, no, and, I will say it will. It would. It wasn't Sam James's fault. It was Bryce Ford Wheaton's fault. He ran the defender right into him. But at the same time, I mean, it's communication with the offense. It's an entire offense. You have mm-hmm. to know what you're doing. You gotta know what's play. What your plays are. Yeah, and like Jordan said, like Neil Brown came out and was like, "Yeah, our our room for mistakes are super small." And it's like, uh, it. He might have been a little bit honest, you know, saying like, hey, we're going to be 50-50 on most of these games and it's going to kind of come down to who executes better. And for the first time, I feel like since Neil Brown came in, I'm looking at him and saying, are you up to that task, Neil Brown? Are you are, – are, because it's going to come down to you. Like uh, these big mistakes, like they're also down to coaching, man. Like you got to have your guys prepared and ready to go in there and make smart decisions. And if you're going to leave a man in there that's not making smart decisions, then you, you're going to take some heat for it, you know, yeah. these 50-50 games. Yeah, I think that's why this game kind of smacked people in the face is just because um, with Daigie, you know, you knew what you had. You were expecting the improvement or whatever. But even without that, with him, you thought you had a game manager that takes care of the football, doesn't really make a lot of mistakes, and that was the upside of Daigie. And then when you don't have that, it's like, well, okay, what's the upside here with this guy? And it was just not expected, just as you're not expecting Neil Brown to get out coached or his team to, you know, have costly turnovers because, you know, the type of – Uh, program that he's trying to build and what he preaches and things like that so I think that that's another thing that was really just you know smack people in the face when it came to uh, this loss to Maryland yeah and I didn't even think about that you're absolutely right like one of the positives to Daigie going in was that he took care of the ball and first but then again last season two of his interceptions I think all four of his interceptions came within like two or three games I mean it's not like he threw an interception like separated out there throughout the year last year. I mean, it was when he had really low games. I mean, they were – he was turning the ball over. And, and maybe it's just one of those games this year. It's one of the two – one of the few games this year where he's just going to struggle to find his targets uh, safely. So, you're absolutely right, though. No, absolutely. And, you know, going back to Stephen's point uh, – No, go ahead, Stephen. No, absolutely. Is, going back to Stephen's point. Oh, I was just going to say, with as much as you've seen, Deggy, you know, you do have a good sample size to go on. You know, we've got it's it's over it's over a season and a half at this point that you have a, as a sample size. So, I mean, it's not like this is a consistent thing for him. So, I guess the positive taken out of that would be, you know, he he is the type of person to get that corrected moving forward. So. Yeah, very true, very true. You know, you. I think that there's still hope uh, for Daigie, but I think, um, I don't know, we just have to see if that improvement they talked about is, is really there and it was just an aberration this game or if this just kind of is who he is. And if it is who he is, then I think we can all agree, you know, something's got to give uh, moving forward. But I did want to go back to your point, Stephen, about Winston Wright breaking the school record for most kick return yards in a game, uh, 217 kick return yards. I think he had highest in school history and first player to ever go over uh, 200. I think Tavon's highest was the record, but it was 199. So first player to have over 200 uh, kick return yards in a single game for West Virginia. And, you know, we don't really do uh, players of the game after after losses, but um, if so, I think that that would be a, a good candidate right there. And so definitely think he deserved a, a nod for uh, that and the job he did. Yeah, if we're still doing player of the game, though, I'm uh, I'm going with Vendarius Callen, man. Hell of a game. Hell of a game. Uh, absolutely Sean not. Sean Martin, too, though. All three, let's do the score to all three of our touchdowns. Yeah, I'll have to Cal- Bradley. Uh, no, nah, it's Leonard Brown. That dude scored all three of our touchdowns. He didn't even touch the ball hardly at all in the second <laughs> half and scored all yeah, three of Yeah, Letty's going to be Letty, though, man. Letty's going to be Letty. Yeah, and I'm not going to take it away from him. Give him the play of the game. Uh, you got to give him that recognition. He put it on his back. I do give him that recognition, but he gets that recognition but, every week. But without – yeah, but without I a doubt. I think Winston Wright 2,000 yards this season. Yeah. I'll have Winston you Wright know, kept us in that game, though. Had, had Winston Wright not had those two big returns, we would have lost that game by a lot more than what we lost it by. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was like a huge – But, I mean, to that point, you know, Jim and Deggie's – or not just Jared Deggy. The offense has to put the ball in the end zone if you get the ball down on that kind of return. Like, what? What are we doing? Give the ball to Letty. Do what you do best. I don't think Letty touched the ball in the entire fourth quarter. 
<laughs> How many times we're running the ball? We're running the offense through Letty, but he doesn't touch the ball in the fourth quarter. No. Yeah, what's no even sense. crazier is Neil Brown came out and said that he got Letty as many touches as he's wanting to get him. You know, he's like, oh, we got in that like twenty five range, and it's like, he, I, if if you were banking on just like hitting twenty five touches by Letty Brown and then just stopping and being like, oh, well, we got to save him for another game. It's not going to happen. Like, you well, gotta, if that's the case, then put Justin Johnson in there. What do you, I mean, what I thought yeah, we was. No Brown. Yeah. No Brown came out and said that was a big mistake that he should have played Justin Johnson more. He said he only played two snaps and he said he should have played way more than that. Oh, absolutely. As much as we heard from him in the off season, I mean, he was a, you know, a viable backup. Mm-hmm. Well, to me, that uh, that's one thing I so did want to mention. Man. You know, before we before we finally get off of uh, get off Maryland, there was there was one thing that I was thinking about with the Letty, and I think you know I've discovered with this coaching staff, you know, you kind of have to read in between the lines a little bit about what they're talking about. I think uh, you know, not even talking about Daggy's improvement throughout the offseason, but I think thinking about Letty Brown and how they want to get him more touches, and they really have had him working on his pass pass catching and they want to get him involved in the passing game out the backfield I think that you know we're all excited oh they're going to use him more plus in the run game when really what that should have said if you're reading between the lines now knowing what we know post Maryland is that our run blocking isn't that great we would love to hand it to him 15 to 20 times but we don't trust our run blocking and so I think that's why you're seeing Letty split out you're seeing five wide sets you're seeing 40 passes I don't think they trust the run blocking that's just my assessment uh, post Maryland Yeah, which is insane considering that the strength of our offensive line right now is supposed to be between, you know, guard to guard. It's not supposed to be, you know, our left tackle is a little bit more experienced than our right tackle, but, you know, we were never supposed to be stronger with the starting of freshman, true freshman right tackle, you know, and that's really worrisome. If if those, if that's what we should be seeing or, like, understanding is that our interior linemen is just not getting the push that they should get, which Neil Brown came out and said they put a big hog of a nose tackle down there and we just couldn't move him. You got some issues. I mean, if you if that's supposed to be the 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 accoutrement of your line, then you are just not in a good way. Yeah, I mean, isn't that what we are supposed to you know be better at this season? I thought that by this season, especially with what we worked on last season, that was our whole you know emphasis was offensive line improvement. Why are we having regression at the offensive line position now? With an offensive lineman that you have transferring from Virginia Tech that's an All-American, and then you have, you know, how how much experience along the offensive line at this point? Your highest, recre- your highest rated offensive lineman recruit in school history. I, I don't know, man. I keep going back over this in my head. I have I have so many questions, man. Like, yeah. and Neil Brown's we... answer to that was Neil Brown's answer to that was just like, oh, we were lacking on the fundamentals. We went out there and did like things that we were never taught to do, and it's like, yeah, Neil Brown, like that's not. I can, we can try to hold linemen to that, but like in the end, like I feel like that's a coaching thing. You know what I mean? Like they should have been absolutely. I was say, ready isn't to go that what fall camp is for? Fun. Yeah, isn't. Sound fun. I maybe I forgive you for that last year when you know we're missing spring practice and all kinds of other things. But like this year, man, you had a full year. Like, it shouldn't fundamentals be like first and foremost in the coach's mind? Shouldn't they be making sure that our linemen aren't messing up their fundamentals and not getting good pad level and you know moving the nose guard out of the way? And it's like you know you can look at those guys and maybe it is because we have a sophomore, a true sophomore center, and we got a true freshman right tackle and we've got to transfer in on right guard and but still man i it's just we're going to be hurting if they if if it's only fundamentals then i hope to god that they get that corrected and then they realize how bad it is to not have sound fundamentals but if it's just not proper coaching and it's just going to be poor fundamentals all year then it's going to be a tough year maybe that's what miss we're uh maybe that's what near neil brown uh meant whenever he uh he said that he was glad we were playing our first game on the road. He didn't want to play that game in front of Morgantown's fans. Would have been bad. Maybe. Yeah, could be. I mean, that offensive line though has got to has got to improve for uh, 
for the season to uh, be anywhere near as successful as I think we all had, you know, not only predicted, but had hoped that it would be. Um, but, you know, Long Island coming up, so move past Maryland. We'll close the book on that now. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Long Island uh, momentarily, but um, – why not a little bit uh, more on everyone's uh, favorite subject that's been coming up periodically now? How about uh, some conference realignment talk, gentlemen? Aren't you guys just so excited? So excited. Yeah, I'm glad I, I, didn't, I didn't expect to see some movement this soon, but, hey, I guess we can't really wait around because, I mean, I think we're all pretty sure Oklahoma and Texas are piecing out at the end of this year, so I guess they can't really wait too much longer. Because uh, you got to figure out, you know, conference scheduling and all kinds of different stuff. So I guess they really got to get a roll on it. Yeah, I agree. I think it definitely came out uh, sooner than I expected it would. But uh, apparently, the Big Twelve uh, expanding, adding four members. Um, I believe that the report came out, you know, about a few days ago that you know this was real, and then now a report came out today that the applications from these four teams are expected within the next 48 hours, and then of course the Big 12 would have to have their vote, and you know within you know the next week or two we could have uh, four members uh, confirmed to join the Big 12, and I believe they said that you know in the agreement it would be 2023 or 2024 when they'd be joining, but BYU, uh, UCF, Cincinnati and Houston um, looks like they will be future members of the big 12 conference. Um, what are your guys thoughts on the four teams, you know, that are joining, but also what does this mean for West Virginia um, rebuilt conference going to actually be 12 teams in the big 12. Again, probably going to have divisions. You're going to have, you know, so a close uh, in proximity team to you in Cincinnati. Um, so do you guys think this means uh, West Virginia, it's more than likely sticking around in the Big 12 as well. What do you think, Stephen? Uh, I don't think so. I think West Virginia is still more, more likely to end up in the ACC. Uh, maybe that's wishful thinking on my end, but I really do believe that that's where we'll end up in the end because, you know, moving forward, West Virginia has to put themselves in the best position to be in a playoff spot. And whatever that may be, you know, we've got to do that moving forward. And whatever the Big Twelve Conference will be, I don't, I don't believe we'll have the competitiveness, or it, it'll have the competitiveness, but it's not going to have the firepower, or the prestigeness to be able to, to be known as one of those power. What will be the Power Four conferences instead of the Power Five? <clears throat> and so I, I really do truly believe that West Virginia should still, you know try to go for the ACC if, if at all possible. And, I don't, you know, with the way West Virginia's playing right now, uh, you know, that doesn't bode well for them. That's why it's such an impactful season in my mind. Every single game counts so much more this year because, and, you, know, it, you know, it's on that resume for what conference that you're going to end up in eventually. And like I've said before, West Virginia has to be in a conference, you know, with a with a big dog like that, with a Texas and Oklahoma, with a – you know, Ohio State, if we go to the Big Ten, with, you know, the, it's got to be in a conference with one of those types of caliber schools that are going to be, you know, competitive every single year to put, your, to put yourself in the highest possible level in college football. And it's not going to be the Big 12 Conference. Bradley, any thoughts? Um, I, I'm definitely getting more comfortable with the idea of chilling out in the Big 12 for a little bit longer. I do like the addition of Houston. I think Houston's a big market, big money. I think that they could instantly become a big brand in football or a lot bigger brand in football with Power 5 status if we can keep Power 5 status if people even want to call it that anymore. Um, I think that Cincinnati's rolling right now. I think you really want to have Cincinnati have a wonderful year this year. I think you need them to kind of – keep that winning streak up i think we want iowa state to beat oklahoma in the big 12 and i think that like if those couple things kind of happen then that gives the big 12 coming up a little bit more of a a little bit more of a a pizzazz you know a little bit more spiciness into the conversation because i really think that west virginia is okay adding in these new schools i don't think we're going to be making near as much money per year losing Oklahoma and Texas, we're definitely going to be making a lot less money, but we're also going to be getting a lot more money from a buyout from them. And so I think that we are lucky to already have our facilities upgraded. 
The stadium's looking nice. We have really good uh, uh, infrastructure, which Neil Brown preaches all the time. But we've got really good infrastructure right now. So I think that having a little bit less money in our pockets won't hurt us as bad as some of these programs that are still trying to upgrade their facilities and stuff like that. Um, we can take this $10, $20 million that we're going to get from this Oklahoma buyout or even 20 to 40 because I think we're getting roughly 15 20 from each school. And we could take that into upgrading. I would personally like to see us upgrade our stadium a little bit more, maybe just try to add. Because I think West Virginia would sell out tickets if it was a 65,000-seat stadium or a 70,000-seat stadium. I think you're still selling out every single ticket. And I've said that for years, but the athletic department's made it a point at each and every time that it's came about they're not going to do that. And especially whenever they've put how much ever into you know the concession area and everything like that. Like that it was like a multi – I don't even know how much million that was. That was a lot of money for those concession areas. Yeah, and I mean, but it, think about it. I mean, if you get ten, twenty, thirty million dollars dumped right in your lap, I mean, that would give you a sizable chunk to do whatever you want to. And I mean, and they're trying to improve. Granted, Patterson right now is flooding like a bitch every other time it rains. Oh, but I mean, they are really trying to make it easier to get in and out of that stadium and trying to get more and more people in and out of that stadium. So I think that they would take that chance and try to bump it up just a little bit. I mean. Because I, I don't see why not. I think that's the next step is just trying to – because, again, I think that they would sell out every single ticket they had available. But I think that adding in these four teams is going to be super comfortable for West Virginia, and it's ideal for us because, like I said, it's going to give us some good competition to work on. You know, we'll have Cincinnati, and like Houston will definitely be a better brand. BYU, sure, whatever. Uh, UCF, definitely excited about playing them. And I think that if we want to in three or four years down the road – want to try to explore our options and see if we can jump over to the ACC. Uh, hopefully after maybe we built a little bit better brand than what we're building this year um, so far, uh, that it would be good for us. So I, I like adding in the four teams. I like the four teams that we're adding in. They're competitive. They've got good money behind them. They can make an impact immediately. And so I think that West Virginia is going to feel a lot more comfortable sitting back and being like, yeah, we can ride out our time in the Big 12 till 2026 when the ACC is actually ready to add in some people and maybe Notre Dame's willing to move on their stance a little bit. So, yeah, I, I, I love it. Oh, yeah, I think I'm behind it too. I like, like you said, UCF and Cincinnati. That's two teams that have both had 11-win seasons, you know, uh, multiple in UCF's case, and uh, I think Cincinnati may have two actually. But you know, past three, four seasons, they've been really great teams. I love getting someone on the east, uh, east, eastern side of the of the map. You know, for West Virginia, you know, in a bordering state. Uh, you know, with Cincinnati, I like that a lot. And like Stevens said, wishful thinking. I still hope West Virginia ends up in the ACC. I still think that's you know our best fit, but. I think that this might solidify that West Virginia is going to stick around for a while in my mind. And um, if they do, I'm not, I'm not so upset with that. I think, um, you know, you got a great chance to become the premier football team in this conference. If you continue to build, you know, and Neil Brown builds what he's saying he's building and, you know, the trust the climb and, and all of that, especially if this is split into divisions and all you have to do is win your division to get in the conference championship game, rather than playing every team as you do now. I think a lot of this, works into West Virginia's favor. I'm not only, you know, having an away game that fans can actually travel to now, um, you know, comfortably. And then also I think it works in West Virginia's favor um, success-wise. I think that this could uh, play a big part, you know, in uh, moving forward West Virginia, and it could be something similar to become something similar to what West Virginia was doing in in the Big East, I think, um, it would have potential to. Yeah, but I still don't think that this playing in this conference and running this conference with the way the other other conferences are shaping out, I don't I just don't if they don't expand the playoff, that is. I don't see West Virginia yeah, being able to compete yeah, for a yeah. playoff. I don't I don't see that. And that's what well, your like ultimate you that, goal like is Cincinnati. West Virginia would be that, right? But it's like you look at a team like right now, Cincinnati sitting in the AAC. I mean, they're in a top 10 team right now. And you tell me if they don't have a perfect season that they at least have an argument for it. And then they don't have Cincinnati. an argument, but, but yeah, but you and I both know they won't make that. The argument will be that, that Ohio State's two loss record will be better or, or, you know, whoever's two loss record from the AC, the SEC or the Big Ten would be a better, you know, argument for the playoff spot than an undefeated or you know a one loss Cincinnati squad because we've seen that with TCU a few years ago in a big 12 conference they're they're a big 12 team 
that's true. Okay, but that was that was also that was before. Be, that, was yeah. that was gonna say that was before the the Big Twelve had the conference championship game was the big thing there for TCU. And since then, you've seen the Big Twelve, you know, get in. You know, Oklahoma's yeah. got in. Other teams, you know, would have probably gotten in. And I think that's going to be the difference because I think adding these four teams, I think it's going to remain Power Five. I think the Big Twelve is going to keep that designation. And, you know, Cincinnati maybe now would be overlooked, but in the Big 12 Power 5 Conference, I think they'd get in or whoever, if, you know, if undefeated team or possibly even a one loss, but definitely an undefeated team from the Big 12 Power 5, I think would have a great chance to get in because, to me, I think adding these four teams, I would put the Big 12 on par with the Pac-12, and the only reason I would put them behind the ACC would be Clemson. I think uh, top to bottom, talent-wise, you know, caliber of the teams that you're adding, you know, all around the the Big 12 would be deeper, I think. Yeah, because I was going to say, because you could look at like a UCF and Cincinnati right now, like they're making an argument for getting into the playoffs, having, you know, a, a perfect season, playing a lot less competition than what they would be playing, hopping over to the Big 12. Because, I mean, because then at least you're going to – every single game is at least a good game. Like there is real no gimmies other than Kansas in the big 12. And that would still remain true adding in UCF and BYU and Houston. And uh, you know, I, it, there is still no gimmies. Like I still don't feel as comfortable making sure I beat all those teams every year as a Mountaineer fan. You know, like I could definitely see us dropping some of those games if our program is still in the same position that we're at now, you know, I could definitely see them being on par with anyone such as like a TCU and a Baylor. And those right now are considered better wins than half of the schedule, if not more than what Cincinnati and UCF play currently. So I, yeah, I, I agree with Jordan. I think that you, you get an undefeated big 12 team. They have an argument for that, you know, fourth spot in the playoff. I definitely think that we're a lot better position if they expand the playoffs. It's a lot tougher with four, but I don't think it's impossible. Oh, I'd, I'm not saying that they don't have an argument. I absolutely believe that they would have an argument, but you both know as well as I do that history is not on that side. History proves otherwise of that fact with conferences, you know, in such positions with the, you know, the American athletic and, and, you know, and other teams that you've seen. Even back but in the I mean, BCS you know, era, you know, you know, you seen Boise State get the snub, and the the playoff was supposed to fix that because you have a four team setup versus a two team setup that's automatically chosen by the computers, and you know now it's a never ending, you know, cycle with with the stuff like that, and I I don't know. I'm afraid that what what we're heading towards is, like I said before, junior NFL, junior NBA. You know, you're going to be in that kind of type of position to where you're having to fight to be on the top tier of those teams. And, you know, maybe it's more fear mindset than, you know, on my end, but I absolutely believe, I don't mean that, that, you know, West Virginia wouldn't have an argument playing against those, those caliber teams every year is to be in a playoff spot. Of course they would. I obviously absolutely believe that. I believe that TCU back, you know, like I mentioned before, and you know, I know it was about the, the, cha- the big 12 championship game, not being, you know, around back then, but I don't know. I just, I'm, you guys know, I'm a man of history. I'm a man of stats. I go with what yeah, I've seen in the past. Maybe, maybe this Stat makes man. bowl games a little bit more important because you can get a, you could get bowl games or like real true comparisons as to how conferences are doing. Because then you're looking at with a 14 playoff, is it literally just going to be SEC championship game? split up between one and four and then Ohio state and Clemson. Is that what it's always going to be? Right. It, are people going to be happy with that? Or if you look at, you know, big 12 keeps getting shafted, but yet they keep going to these high end bowl games and maybe can compete against, you know, the top two or three in the sec, uh, you know, sec third place, you know, the next one's in the ACC and you could see where the big 12s are winning those bowl games. Uh, you know, you look at it maybe in the following years, you're like, Hey, like we didn't put them in last year. They showed up in their bowl game, you know, People aren't as happy about seeing, you know, champion the SEC championship round two, or you know, let's give these guys another shot. So maybe that makes bowl games a little bit more of a uh, a priority, you know. Whereas they've really lost their significance the last couple of years since the college football playoffs. No. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I definitely love to see uh, bowl games, you know, become more important again. Because I'd agree with you. Um, you know, they kind of seem, yeah, like just like, eh, you know, no, no definitely not uh, what they once. What they yeah, once like, were, but like who cares about the cheese at bowl? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. 
Duke's Mayo Bowl, <laughs> like you know. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. What is these? Where are these bowls anymore? But yeah, I think I think the Big Twelve adding these teams is is. I'm surprised that they were this proactive. I'm surprised they moved this quickly. But I think I think it's I think it's a good thing for the Big Twelve whether West Virginia ends up staying there or not. I think that that this kind of means that they will for a little bit. But uh, who knows? That remains to be seen. And I'd love to be wrong because, like I said, I'd prefer to be in the ACC. But I don't think this is uh, so bad if if this is how. West Virginia ends up for the next, you know, few seasons. Agreed. Yeah. West Virginia, hey, I'll, Big 12 been showing mad love to WVU on social media. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Don't want us to leave. Yep, trying to keep, like us, around. Eyes, heart, trying to keep us around. Heart eye emojis and stuff. Gotta it's love like it. A, it's like a boyfriend trying to get his girl back or something. <laughs> a cute high school relationship that ended too soon. Oh man! So, all right, uh, you guys want to? Well, I don't know. I don't know what too much to get into Long Island matchup wise. Uh, I know their uh, mascot is the Sharks. I know they have a head coach that's in his uh, first season, I believe. Um, no Brown said they have a pretty good defensive end, uh, pretty good special teams, good kicker. They have a pretty good kick returner, I think, or which he said was their running backs. Um, other than that, I don't know too much uh, about uh, Long Island. I know um, we'll probably win, so I figured unless you guys have anything you want to say, we'll just jump into key to victory and then uh, hit some predictions and uh, get out get out of here. Uh, sound good to you guys? Uh, get out, get out of here. Uh, sound good to me, man. All right, so uh, my key to victory is uh, show up. Just, uh, just show up. You know, especially the offense. The we up. want to see the offense show up. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all you got to do for this one. But I think the seeing the offense uh, look pretty damn good is what the fans are really going to want to see because, you know, against the competition and, you know, how bad the offense looked before, we're going to really want to see this offense look really good to feel like there's been any progress there. Specifically for me, I'm going to be watching the offensive line and um, I'm hoping to see Garrett Green get some snap, snaps. But uh, my key to victory would be uh, just show up. Uh, especially the offense show up. Uh, what about you, Bradley? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with don't turn the ball over. Just I, I think you have one turnover. I think you're going to hear people get loud. I think we turn the ball over once against Long Island University. I think people will have something to say about it. So you don't turn the ball over. I think people will be happy. You turn the ball over once. I think people are going to be mad. Yep, that's big. Let's uh, get through this mistake free as well. Uh, Steven, key to victory? Uh, Steven, key to victory? Uh, I guess my key to victory, you know, show up. I'll say the same thing as you. But I don't, you know, not really for me is the key to victory. I'll, I'll give you my key to success. I think that West Virginia needs to come out with a really good frame of mind this weekend. I think that they need to come out, you know, showing that they can dominate a football of this caliber. And I don't mean to come out and beat them like, 30 something to 14 or 30 something to 21 you know i want to you know we need to come out and really lay the hammer down on these guys and show what our program can really do yeah i just think this season or not this season but this weekend is a really pivotal get pivotal and you know in terms of a momentum swing for west virginia going forward in this season this is what these games are designed to do right i mean supposed to get you in the right frame of mind Put you posit- in a positive frame of mind and feeling confident. And it, I think, really could bode well for going forward into the Virginia Tech game. And I, you know, haven't been really high up on that ever since this past weekend, but you should, you come out and you have, you know, a really good game against Long Island and you could build you enough confidence going into to week three against Virginia Tech. You never know what could happen. So, yeah, and my, my key to victory is show up, but more importantly, my key to success would be, you know, how West Virginia's mindset is, you know, coming out for this game on Saturday. Are you pumped up? Are you still downtrodden because of the last week? You know, what's going to be your mindset? Yeah, it's a tune-up game, and I think how West Virginia starts is going to be going to be important uh, and big to see, you know, how they prepared this week, how, how, they, how are they going to bounce back. Um, you know, just uh, improvement. I think, you know, we want to see improvement, um, but it's kind of hard to judge, I think, 
in this game it's going to be hard to judge what is improvement because you're going to look good no matter what I feel like. So I think, you know, more than anything, like you said, it's a tune-up game, game to work on yourself. And then against Virginia Tech here in a couple of weeks, we'll, that's when we'll see um, how much we've ha- we have improved since that um, opening uh, kind of disappointment against, against Maryland, I guess. So uh, uh, with that being said, uh, score predictions, gentlemen. Uh, I guess let's see uh, – what what we're going to go with as far as victory, because I'm sure we're all three going to pick a victory, obviously. But, uh, Stephen, kick it off this time. Uh, score prediction. No, like I said, I think West Virginia needs to come out and lay the hammer down on this team. I think West Virginia does that. I think our offense has actually, you know, a really good turnaround in week two. I think we win. Uh, I'm going to say 56-10. Ooh, I like it. I'd love to see us put that many right, points. I'm, I'm going go, to go. I'm going to go a little high scoring, but I mean, I, I don't hear a lot out of LIU. If it was someone like Georgia Southern or someone, you know what I mean, the higher end FCS team, then I, you know I'd pick West Virginia not score as many points. But I think West Virginia really needs to come out and prove what they've got offensively, and Neil Brown knows that. The offense knows that. I think you see a big jump. Yeah, I think that this is actually one of their first few years in FCS too, so they're like a new FCS school, mm-hmm. right? I, yeah, I saw, you don't hear a lot of positive out of them. New coach in it with this team, too? Yeah, not not a chance. Yeah, I saw someone say that they this may be one of the worst teams to ever come to Morgantown, and that's not a slight against, you know, Long Island or anything <laughs> like that. It's just, you know, something I saw, so I'm just, you know, repeating it. Don't don't shoot the messenger, I guess. But uh, uh, Bradley, uh, what about Marshall's, you? Has, has it, has it Change. Marshall? Marshall's played at W, hasn't he? I'm changing my – Oh, I'm oh, rooting God. for the Sharks now, Huntington. you guys. That's a little harsh, man. <laughs> uh, I actually I actually like the Thundering Herd. Both Go Sharks. Sure Marshall graduated. So. Um, yeah, I'm saying that if we if we don't win this by at least six or seven touchdowns, it's going to be a disappointment. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with – So, if we win by five touchdowns, you're going to be disappointed? Yes. Dang. Yeah, I'm going to be disappointed. So I'm going to say 52 to 10. I'll go with the six touchdown lead. Wow. Both got us dropping the 50 burger. Um, Bradley, you're probably going to be disappointed with my prediction then because um, I've got 35 to three. I think that the defense shows up. I wanted to predict a shutout, but I'll give them, give them the benefit of a field goal. I'm going, you know, but I think the offense, you know, from what I saw, um, I'm just be glad if they score over 30 points. So I'm going 35 to three. Wow. I mean, Jordan that's a little awesome harsh, I think. <laughs> yeah, Jordan is upset. Letty scored Jordan's three goodness. touchdowns in the first half, man. <laughs> I mean, I just – I don't – I think our second string scoring 21. Oh, I mean, I man. hope so. I hope so. But right now that offense just has me so so disheartened that I just – I <laughs> until I see it, I'm not putting any faith in that offense right now. I just can't. I can't I, look, I know I've been tough on them too, but uh. – we got a good offense. Only man. We just got to show points it. Points against Long Island, they got smacked by like fifty against FIU. I will say, if they come out and only score thirty-five points, I will consider that a disappointment. Oh yeah, people will be pissed. I don't think people will be pissed if we win. I don't think if people, it, unless we win the game by like three points, people aren't going to be pissed. I don't think. I think as yeah, long as we win the people, game a little bit handily, looking, no, true fans, true people that really follow will know, though, that we'll be in trouble. That'll be the case. But I don't I think will people terrified. will be legitimately. I will be terrified for September 18th if we w- win 35 to 30. I'm, I'm already terrified for September 18th. I'm not going to lie. Hey, me too. But my new, my new motto for this season, uh, expect the worst, hope for the best. That's the new motto. <laughs> the new motto, especially in regards to the trust the climb offense. down. I mean, I'm still trusting the climb. That's the main motto, but I guess that's the offensive motto. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll still trust the climb. I'm not. Because our, our offense I, I is I wish offensive. that our fan base wasn't so. It's not our fan base. I, you know, I, I was told something the other day that really made a lot of sense. It's not the WVU fan base that really, you know, has that bad reputation like that. It's the Facebook WVU fan base. There's a difference. The social media WVU fan base is a lot harsher than the actual WVU fan base, I believe. The actual WVU fan base gives you a a little more of a chance. 
Yeah, I'd second that. You see some out. You talk to people at games, and it's. <laughs> I talk to people at games, and the perspective, and you know, generally, is a lot more optimistic than what you see on Facebook. I think it's just because you see the people that don't go to the games on Facebook. Yeah, and you got people sharing the shit out of Brad Smith stuff, and he's absolute garbage. So. Yep, yeah, you got another unnamed news site that everyone uh, wants to share for whatever reason that I can't seem to fathom. But yeah, I'd be blasting his ass on Twitter story. every chance I get. I think most WB fans garbage. do. I think most WB fans do. Yeah. Yep. Can't stand him. All right, but I, I digress. Uh, so, uh, this to the Dana know, and Brad Smith hate so, show. Yeah, that's about to say that's we 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 probably could go down the rabbit hole a little further. So, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just uh, get ready to end it here, I guess, gentlemen, because uh, I guess you got both guys got us dropping the fifty burger. I've got a little bit more somewhat disappointing according to these two uh, performance with a thirty five to three score. But uh, either way, we're fully expecting the Mountaineers to go uh, to one and one this season, and if they don't, something's definitely, definitely, definitely very, very wrong. And uh, predictions uh, probably should flip. Uh, win loss records from what we predicted in the season prediction roundtable, but uh, that's not going to happen. So it's a win, and I think just by how much is uh, is going to be interesting to see. Hopefully, these guys are um, closer to correct than I am. But uh, before we close this thing out, any final thoughts, gentlemen? Uh, Bradley, anything you want to add here? Uh, nope. I'm just ready to watch more football. Right on. Me too. I, I'd agree. For, I'd agree with that. Ready to get that bad taste out of my mouth and uh, see what a win looks like. Uh, Stephen, what about you? Any final thoughts? Uh, you know, just for anybody watching the show, you know, if you're going to the game this weekend, make sure you're loud. Make sure that you know the team, you know, gets the support. That, you know, they do deserve. Don't be too harsh on them. And we got we got a lot of football to play this season, so. Well, I'm ready to get well back said. to Morgantown, man. I, I've, I haven't been to Morgantown in over a year. So, I mean, at this point, I'm just itching to get back into that stadium, especially after going to that trash dump that we went into last weekend. Oh, gosh. If anybody doesn't know, Maryland Stadium, if it's not the worst div- Division One football stadium in the country, then I I feel sorry for that other school because <laughs> this stadium – it has a bad reputation for a reason. I'll just say that. Yeah. And if was, any Maryland uh, people are be, watching uh, this updated. show, update your stadium. We can't hear what you're saying on the PA system. We can't see what you got on the video boards or anything. Update your stadium. Be like yeah, WWE. I think their uh, their video boards about the size of my living room television. Wow. Oh, mine's bigger. <laughs> I believe it. I At believe least I can it. see the score on my television. I couldn't even see the score on theirs. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. Absolutely atrocious. But no, I think uh, the, I'm excited to get back to Morgantown. Also, I'm sure the rest of the Mountaineer Nation is. Uh, like I said, it's been a year for you. I haven't been since uh, 2017. I think that was the last one I got to go to. Been in Florida, so uh, could be big getting back up there and uh, getting to see a W is going to be nice. So uh, that's going to be great. But. Uh, this has been the Country Roads webcast. As always, follow us on Twitter at WVU Country Roads. Like us on Facebook. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube. Trying to grow that up here uh, for the video side of things. And, um, you know, as always, find us on any podcast platform you like. Just search Country Roads webcast. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, you know, you name it. You can pretty much find us there. And uh, go ahead and subscribe to us. And, you know, leave us a rating if you'd like and review. That'd be great. That helps, you know with those algorithms and however all the that stuff works. You know, I don't know. I'm not technologically advanced. We just talk, get on here and talk Mountaineer football. So, And we'll be excited to do that again with the uh, Long Island Reaction Show, which will be live streaming on Facebook and YouTube uh, either, either on Saturday or Sunday evening. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And then next week we'll be back with the uh, Virginia Tech preview. But until then, as always, I'm your host, Jordan Cruz, and for our co-host, Stephen and Bradley, until next time. Let's go, Mountaineers. If you really want to know, then come on, let's go. Take a stroll down those...